Let me just preface this video by saying that I think all food is super food. I just like all food a lot. But if we're talking about squash and specifically winter squash, spaghetti squash is definitely the worst one. I love winter squash of all kinds. I love kabocha squash. I love butternut, acorn. I love those little delicatas that you can slice into little ring shapes. I love that it lasts so long so I can stock up when it's really cheap, but you will probably never see me picking up a spaghetti squash, except for today because I had to buy one to show you. This is when it comes in handy to get a little bit of YouTube money so I can afford things like spaghetti squash that I don't even want. <laughs> it's all for you. Spaghetti squash is praised by recipe makers and eaters all over the place because once it's cooked, it kind of has this like stringy texture that's supposed to be spaghetti-like. My argument is that it's nowhere near as good as spaghetti and it's nowhere near as good as any other winter squash on the market. Here I have a spaghetti squash. I roasted this along with a bunch of other winter squash because I wanted to taste a few of them side by side. I decided not to roast this gigantic pumpkin because I just feel like it's too much squash to eat. I'm really excited about this one. I think this is called a princess pumpkin. Just picked it up today. And I've got this nice white acorn squash here that I don't think I've ever had an, a white acorn squash before, but I'll save that for another day too. This was roasted in a 425 degree oven for about 45 minutes. And you kind of shred it with a fork and it gets stringy. There is another way to roast it and that is to cut the squash in half widthwise, like down the center. And then apparently you get slightly longer strands, which makes sense, but I don't think that it really saves it in this situation. So I just roasted it the normal way. So here we go. We've got some nice shredded spaghetti squash here. My beef with spaghetti squash is no matter which way you slice it, it always just continues to exude water. So if you were to like put some sauce on this now, it would just become a watery puddle. If you were to toss it with greens or cheese or anything else, it would eventually, without a doubt, just become a watery puddle. And I do remember um, back in, I feel like it was in the early 2000s, people would try and convince you that like, you can just put spaghetti sauce on spaghetti squash and that it would just be like spaghetti. Don't do it. <laughs> it sucks. I didn't put anything on this, by the way. I didn't put any salt or oil. People are like, oh, if you don't salt it before you cook it, it doesn't get as watery. But if I season it at all, which you have to because you want to make it taste good, it's just going to become really watery. So I'm going to put a bit of salt. I'm just going to go simple with this because I want to compare the squash in its simplest form. Flavor-wise, it's pretty bland. I mean, squash is bland, but like, this is extra bland. And texture-wise, it's just stringy. I'm not gonna like turn my nose up at it, and I'm not gonna say no to it. Like if somebody serves me spaghetti squash, I'll happily eat it. I'm just never gonna buy it myself because I just think it's kind of silly. That being said, I'm really hungry right now. As the pool of water kind of starts collecting on the bottom of this plate, I'm gonna have a bite of some of these other squash. A Little bit of salt. Again, I feel like I don't need much with any of these. This one is like a colorful little acorn squash. I'm just gonna, and actually all squash, all winter squash have these like slightly stringy, it's kind of a similar stringy texture. It's just the spaghetti is the stringiest of them all. Mmm, mmm, okay. This is sweet. It's so sweet and nutty. It has like so much depth and it's creamy. The texture is, uh, it's just like, you just want more of it. It's got this really kind of silky, creamy, really sweet and nutty depth of flavor. Huge fan of this. Let's try the butternut. Again, it's like a little bit stringy. If you really think about it, all squash has that kind of basic texture. Mmm. 
Okay. Butternut, not nearly as good as this little acorn. Still better than spaghetti squash though, in my humble opinion. And butternut definitely blends down to be the smoothest. So if you're gonna make soup, I think butternut is the best one to make soup with. I see a lot of recipes where it's like spaghetti squash tossed with feta and some greens and maybe some chickpeas. I see a lot of like lemony kind of spaghetti squash recipes. They're always kind of pasta-ish, but my message to you today is just eat pasta. <laughs> it's better. And if you wanna eat squash, eat squash, but pick a better one. Because any of those recipes with the chickpeas and the lemon and the cheese and all of that, all of those would be so good just on top of a nice bowl of soft squash. You don't need it to be stringy. You don't need it to be spaghettied up. I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> this is just a rant about spaghetti squash. I think it kind of sucks. Let me know if you agree with me or if you want to challenge my opinion on spaghetti squash. If you want to give me a spaghetti squash recipe that's going to change my mind or that's in some way better than spaghetti or squash, then please, please let me know. This winter, try some new winter squash because there's so many great ones out there and some of them are unbelievably delicious like this little colorful acorn, which I'm going to finish eating now. Maybe with a little bit of nutritional yeast dressing because that's one of my favorite ways to eat squash. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>